Я совершил преступление. Я совершил преступление и признан на момент преступления невменяемым, невменяемым. И все, в принципе, хорошо, замечательно. Только, только вот к нам в последнее время стали применять запрещенные препараты. Я стал только зрительный слухой галлюцинации. То есть я их вижу, слышу, вот бывает. Вот сатана, например, Господь, там люди, кого я вижу. Вот, например, я сейчас вас вижу, вы уйдете, потом у меня в голове будут эти голоса. Не каждому дана такая возможность сказать всему миру, всем людям сразу, тем, кому я принес боль и страдания, свои извинения. Я прошу прощения за все, что я содеял. Я прошу прощения за те несчастья, которые я вам принес. Я молюсь за вас. Будьте счастливы. We're making art here, so let's take this color and make it a bit softer. Let's not make it so saccharine. It was beautiful, and it looked like you. I mean, your graphic work looks very confident, but there was no skull. And now this skull looks like a mask. When I first saw it, I was terrified, and at the same time impressed. My eyes are the only part of my face that's left in there. No, I mean, your proportions are still there. You got the proportions right. These are the figures I made. It's a symbol of love. He's her cross. She's been crucified on him. Right, you need a couple more tones like this one here. Add them along the hairline to merge the hair and the skin better. And I think you can use the same tone down there on the side, or both sides of the face, as a shadow. Anyone can end up in a situation where they become a criminal. Anyone can be in the situation where they suffer from mental disorders. Any person could be in our place. I want to sort out my feelings. I've just started figuring this out. I want to really figure it all out, so this never happens and I never come back here again. I'd rather fight myself to the end. It's very difficult to talk to yourself. If I were able to go back to meet the person I was five years ago and explain anything to him, he wouldn't understand. This hospital was set up in 1951 for offenders suffering from mental disorders who have committed serious crimes. 70 or 80 percent have committed violent crimes like homicide, rape, or grievous bodily harm. We have patients with schizophrenia, epilepsy, organic brain syndrome, and mental disorders resulting from alcoholism or mental disability. The person doesn't understand what's going on and commits a crime. So we work with them until they do realize that they are ill, and when they hear voices, they should go and see a doctor rather than pick up an axe and kill somebody. Our patients all go to the same ward at first, and then we separate them based on their condition. The ward has small rooms, and it's mostly for patients who are aggressive or prone to escaping. 
Why are you so late? I got up late today. What are you staring at? What are you, being shy? He's a film star now. A film star. <laughs> I killed this guy called Maga. After that had happened, we then went to my friend's place and he said, do you know that we have three dead bodies? I yelled, what do you mean? I was high. What do you mean? Well, there was this MAGA guy and two more. Well, what do you mean two more? I asked. He said, yeah, we killed them. I still don't understand how I could have killed them. I know I killed MAGA, I admit that much. And I said in court that I killed MAGA. But when I saw their photos, we burned the house down too. I loved only myself. I only thought about myself. I have a mental illness. The treatment was serious. I couldn't stop my hands from shaking. They had to spoon feed me. Take my mom, for example. Imagine someone like me just breaking into her house and stab, stab, stab. They would lock him up and he would just sit there on his bunk, carefree, and would even draw something. We can't change the past. I'm not saying I've totally changed and that I'm a good person now. It's only the beginning. I'm just now starting to smooth the edges. I'm starting to come out of this and see that I can actually achieve something. You know, and I will have to support my mom at some point. What can we achieve through art therapy? At least they can start drawing. This will help them analyze themselves a little bit and relax at the same time. They can be one-on-one -on -one with themselves and with their drawings. An emotion is like a battery. Without these batteries, our patients don't want to do anything. There are some who are already in a state where they just want to stay in bed and don't want to do anything. It's what their sickness did to them. There are some mentally retarded patients who learn how to live in the streets. And I think that if a person is suffering, he has to be helped. In 1989, I was totally insane. I had no money. I needed drugs. Once I stole a huge icon. It was 300 years old. Someone was going to pay me a lot of money for it. But I was so scared. I knew that I had to give it away for free. I ran into a church and asked them to take it from me. I couldn't keep hold of it anymore. Three months later, I went back to that church. It was Easter. The head priest wasn't there, so I talked to his assistant. I asked him if he knew about the icon and that I'd brought to the church. I wanted to know where it was and if I could see it. He said, sure, you can see it. My mum once jokingly said that I'd been conceived by the devil. This became an obsession. I was constantly thinking about being the devil's offspring. It was schizophrenia. I learned that the devil could fly into a church, but God's spirit would not let him enter the sanctuary. The priest told me that the icon was in the sanctuary and that I could go and see it. That was the first time I felt free from this curse of being conceived by the devil. How do we call mentally ill people? Patients, sick people, madmen, psychos, what's acceptable and what's unacceptable. I try not to talk about their victims or relatives of their victims or their crime. I use the term problematic people. Yes, they're problematic mainly for themselves. And my final goal is to treat them humanely. I want them to realize they're human. How can you socialize? How can you be a normal person and consider yourself a normal person if nobody treats you like a normal person? It's a vicious circle.
When I first started my art therapy course with them, I had no previous experience with these kinds of people. I saw people with tattoos, they were scary, and maybe at that time I was afraid of them. I started talking to them about perspective. I would draw something simple, and their first results just shocked me. Each one of them drew himself. They were supposed to draw the person sitting opposite from them, but there was no resemblance. Everyone was drawing themselves. I try my best not to offend them, because you know artists can easily be hurt. I still remember that my professors would often hurt me. <laughs> Of course, we understand that our patients are quite dangerous. How should our society treat them? Of course, we should be on alert. If there's no way to cure someone who is aggressive and potentially dangerous, we should at least hold him in an institution and protect society. This is also very important. Every six months, we gather a committee to examine our patients and determine whether they are still a danger to society. Many patients know that their compulsory treatment isn't over, and they need to stay in our hospital. They take our meetings calmly, but of course, most of them hope to get out of here. His name is Rashid. He's been in our hospital since September 2009. This is his second hearing. In short, he suffered cerebral trauma in his childhood. He has been having seizures since he was 14 and had been under observation since then. He was in prison for 12 years. Hello, my name is Rashid Azizov. I was born in 1953. Yes, we know you. Sit down. Please sit down. We've met before. How are you? I'm okay. How long have you been staying here this time? Three and a half years. How long? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Okay. Has there been any progress? Progress? Well, everything's okay. What was wrong with your nervous system and your mentality? My mentality's fine. Okay. Do you have any questions for the committee? I want to get out of here. Please discharge me. I beg you all, each one of you. Please, discharge me. All right, we'll discuss it. I'm against discharging him. He's not just mentally ill, he's a criminal. He's committed so many crimes. Rape, robbery, grievous bodily harm, larceny. And he hasn't recognized his illness. He has no self-criticism or self-control. While he's physically strong, he'll be coming back to us. And that's for sure. I don't think he can be discharged. I agree. I think we should keep him here, in our hospital. Я хочу, чтобы погибшие люди были счастливы. Здравствуй, Вик. Ну вот и я. Ну что я тебе могу сказать? Наверное, ты меня увидишь скоро. Вот. Скоро осуществится наша с тобой мечта. Я надеюсь, письма ты мои получаешь. Вот. Я твою храню фотографию. Освободите меня, пожалуйста, из этих стен. Где, скажите, Владимир Путин, Владимир Владимирович, освободил меня с дядей привлечения на свободу. Я уже готов к свободе полностью. This is an open ward. All rooms are permanently unlocked. 
Smoking is only allowed in specially designated areas. Patients aren't allowed to keep any sharp items. Alcohol is forbidden. They're allowed to surf the internet, but only in the presence of a counselor or therapist. It's generally advisable not to tell them what they're not allowed to do. It's better to tell them what they can do. They pretty much figured out the rules for themselves. The medical staff are often exposed to aggression, but that depends on what you see as aggression. What you might call verbal abuse is not uncommon with patients, as in obscenities or threats against the staff. Most of our patients are hard to tell from sane people from the look of them, but sometimes a disorder may manifest itself through some sort of weird behavior. I've gotten used to looking at them as simply people. That isn't hard. I like my job. I've been here a pretty long time, since 2006. And one day, some three or four months ago, I'm walking down the street and I bump into a nurse from another ward. And she says, hey, so you're still here. Many of your friends who checked in around the same time as you have long been discharged. And I tell her, no, I'm here for a long time. And I think to myself, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm just beginning to understand. I don't want to just say, Mom, I'm sorry. I want to earn her forgiveness. I want to prove myself so that people will start telling my mom, Natasha, we are proud of your son. You understand? I want my former junkie friends to look at me and say, wow, that guy was one of us, but now he's moved on. He's accomplished something. We're allowed one phone call a month. I call my mom. And every time she sounds a bit different, a bit older. I'm shaking all over afterwards. Mom comes to visit me here, and I count every line on her face. I gave her those. I see myself in her. She looks at me affectionately, but there are tears in her eyes. And that's because of me. And so I absorb all of this as an artist. And I'm consumed by an inner struggle, the virtues and the vices battling inside me. At first I lost sleep, and then I was beginning to get lost within an imaginary world that was all around me. It was absolutely unreal, and there was no place in it for other people. I had a feeling of impunity, of my own significance and superiority to absolutely anyone, including people, nature, and society, anything. My environment at the time certainly has something to do with it. I was generally pretty naive at that age. Somebody suggested to me once, Mikhail, you're such a genius, so why don't you try making drugs? And so I synthesized amphetamines at age 14. From then on, it was just a matter of knowledge, skill, and practice. I could produce practically any substance, at almost no touch with reality, encapsulated within a world of my own. People meant nothing to me. There was just a sense of me. And so it happened that I committed four murders. Three of those cases were just junkies. I gave them a lethal injection while they thought that they were getting high. But the fourth one was violent. I stabbed someone. That's how high I was already. I mean, I thought I was high, but in reality I was going down sinking into the abyss. I was immersed in madness. And that was a scary, scary state of mind. You don't want to ever find yourself in such a realm of insanity. There's just the cold and the darkness. 
My mom sent me a photograph. She said they're having a silver anniversary with dad. So I started thinking of something to paint for them. I decided to paint a full-length portrait of my parents on this canvas. So, here's my head, this is my ear, and they're inside my head. My mom here is like a rose. This leaf here is my younger brother. I'm the elder brother, so I'm protecting our little sister. This is mom with the ring. My dad is the tulip. And this is me, a small creator in a dark world. And I want to create a colorful world for them. Mom likes everything I paint. You could paint her a black square and she'd just say, my son did this. Sometimes I feel like I have a grievance against the creator. Even now I ask him why. Why is it that I never had any love? Now I know where my disease comes from. Same as my crimes and my alcohol and drug addiction. It all springs from me not being loved ever since I was a child. I made up a saying, and I know it sounds quite scary, basically, but there was a time when it overwhelmed me. It goes like this. I love the world in general, and I hate everyone individually. That idea defined my life. I'm an anonymous alcoholic and an anonymous drug addict. I know what addiction is, but my illness feels greater than any of that. Drugs you have to find. Alcohol you have to drink, but that doesn't require anything. The world beams like a rainbow. You get a surge of energy, it gives you such a rush. You don't even need to take anything to get high. I am beautiful myself. I can do anything. I admit that I'm sick. I acknowledge the gravity of my crimes. I spent 20 years incarcerated, and every time I couldn't understand why, what's happened. Now I feel like a baby who's just been born, only now discovering love, kindness. At 45, I only just realized what love for my father is. I love him now, really. And I feel his love for me. This patient comes across as an almost totally sane person, but he's a very good actor. We as psychiatrists can see that in fact he is very emotionally distant. His facial expression is immobile although he speaks according to classic standards of literary language. But those who suffer from schizophrenia typically have no speaking disorder. In other words, schizophrenia implies a dissociated identity, a schism of the mind. But only someone who is very intelligent can become a schizophrenic. Please remember that all of these people receive treatment. But outside the hospital, as a rule, they're pretty much beyond any control. They don't take any medication prescribed to them at all or stop taking them after some time. Hello. I look forward to her every visit, though when she talks to me on the phone, I tell her not to come. But when she's here, it feels so good, so wonderful to give her a hug. But when she leaves, the sadness, the pain starts again. You just drift around with nothing to do. It makes her sad as well. How long has she been coming here? She does everything just to be able to see me. But for how long will this last? I've told her so many times to stop coming. I'm upset that it takes her so long. In the past, she had to take the train to get here. Hello! My little boy! 
This is for you. Five roses. As there are five of us in the family. Your mom loves you so much. I brought you presents. You'll let mom see them. I painted this picture for you. Oh, this is for our silver anniversary. Here, dad is the tulip. It's like a crossword puzzle, right? And I'm the rose. This is Pavel, Ruslana. And this is probably you. Here. In the dark, a little creator. Time will tell. The Lord will see that I'm ready, and he'll do what's right. Even when you apologize to someone or to all of society, you have to be prepared for them to answer, sorry, but we don't believe you. If the committee should take place tomorrow, I'm ready for it, or for any of them. But there are certain circumstances and situations. My medical case is very complicated, and so is my illness. The most important committee is up there. Whatever he decides is what will be.